Yo, what's up? This is William Singe, and I'm stopping in at Take Flight. You know what's up? Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy Wings and 24 Karat Kev. Hello. And you're tapped into the Take Flight podcast. Today, we got uh, Australia's biggest R&B superstar. Woo! Come on. Uh, it's <laughs> Mr. Hey Mama, don't trust your mind <laughs> himself. Mr. William Singe in the building. Hey, what's happening, brother? What's happening? That was a crazy sure. intro. Well done, bro. Uh, you that was a crazy intro because <laughs> like you said R&B and then you sang a pop song. Eh? I so. know, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> How you been, bro? Yeah, I've been good. Been good? Been good, been busy. Living life? Living life, you know how it is now that you're a dad, bro. It's a bit different. Bro, anyway. we've got a bond, a special yeah, bond. Yeah, oh, oh. Sorry, Kev, you'll see there one day, mate. Yeah, one day, one, one day, one day. day. Yeah, got um, to sort myself out first, you know. That's all good, bro. That's the, that's Once the, the you right get there. answer, bro. That's <laughs> the one. How you enjoying dad life, bro? Yeah, I love it. Fuck it, Oh, bro. man, like, it's, it's, um, it's different, but it's all, obviously, like, it puts a lot of things in, into perspective for you. <laughs> like, for me... I was such a, when, when you're single or when you're just like living life how you want to live it, it's kind of like mm -hmm. by your rules and you just do whatever you want. And like, sometimes that might not be the best for your mind frame either. Mm -hmm. Like just doing whatever you want at all times of the day. So I think it gives me a bit of structure. It gives me a bit of, um, yeah, just perspective on life and like, you know, how important it is and, and just how, how to live good. I Facts, guess. bro. Yeah. That's one thing I noticed. And people say before you have a kid, they're like your priorities. You really learn like what you need to do, what you yeah. should do, what you're wasting your time on or what yeah. you should stop wasting your time on. I mean, we were just talking, even like being in your 30s now, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's so different from being in your 20s because you feel like you... You know a little bit more, you're a bit more clued on, but I'm sure once we're in our 40s, we'll look back at our 30s. And saying like, the same thing. Didn't know anything. Mm. Yeah, Preach, yeah. bro. <laughs> Preach. What was your priorities before you had a kid? Before I had a kid? Yeah. Before I had a missus too? Yeah. Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting lit like four times a week, just having yeah. a good time and yeah. make, well, back then making some music and just having a fun time, bro. What about you? Uh, I'm interviewing now. No, nah, go for you, God, bro. Bro. <laughs> uh, What's my priority? Oh, uh, fuck. Oh, man. I don't know. Um, uh, watching The Simpsons. Far. And what was your priorities, uh, bro? <laughs> My priorities were just like, I live it like, so I, I look back and I'm, it was kind of like I was living selfishly. Eh? I was mm -hmm. just doing whatever I wanted, as I said, like, which is a good thing. Like, that's what your 20s is for, really. Yeah. Because, like, you're out of school, you kind of got the time to yourself to figure yourself out. But yeah, I, I think I was living like, doing whatever I wanted to do. But that's the perfect point that you can do that, you could do that because now you're at a point where yeah. you just can't do that. So yeah. you've got to do it once in your life. You yeah, know? it kind of makes you like in your 30s and like being a dad, it makes you lock in a little bit harder on life. Eh? Like, yeah. And just really kind of not like fly by the seat of your pants or is that the same? It, yeah. Something oh, like that. Something like yeah, that. Something but just like, bad. you know, you're winging it most of the time. Yeah. There's no structure. So it's like, it's nice to have a bit of structure. Um, although it, it, it is hard to find like the spare time that I used to have to do music. Preach, time, bro. You know, so, yeah. All right, we'll get into that, bro. Before we go too far, yeah, you've good. obviously had one of the most prolific R&B careers out of Australia, one of. Oh, all right. bro. Like, look, you've done a lot, man. Yeah. But we want to take it a little bit back before we get into that. Uh, you mentioned multiple times about, you know, your dad was a musician back in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. And, and here. And, and here, here. Yeah, okay, yeah. and here too. So he's but just a, mu a straight musician? Not, yeah, he, no was a, he was a straight musician for a bit. And then I think once he had my sister and I, my mom was like, all right, this isn't making enough money. I'm going to need you to get a, okay. get a job, man. <laughs> oh, that makes it harder. That and makes plus, it. I think he was like, he was playing to a lot of like, like bikey um, chapters and stuff like okay. that, All and because right. he was doing like he's he's a rock he was in a rock band like mm -hmm. he was a bass player for like a rock band so, yeah back back then he was doing a lot of that stuff and like I don't think my mum really appreciated him coming home like three days after a gig still pissed like. You know? He was living Fair a enough, rock life. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> right. Hey, he had the opportunity. He was living it. Well, I'm just it's already getting warm in here. Yeah, we, yeah. we did mention. Don't make me take my hat off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that one on, bro. That's the exclusive. We'll singe without a beanie. All yeah, right? yeah, no, no. We're not seeing that today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. But, but other than that, other than what your dad is, so obviously he did a lot of shows, had mm. a lot of time, a lot of time invested into his music. Yeah. How did that impact yourself, uh, I guess, throughout your growing up? Oh, man, done? it was cool because like, obviously like, my household was very musical. You look mm. into any corner of our house and like there was a guitar or there was a bass or yeah. there, there might have been a piano. Nobody knew how to play the piano, but the piano was there nonetheless. <laughs> like it was just cool like that. So there was always things to kind of tinker away on. And my dad, he recorded me when I was like six years old singing Octopus's Garden or something. I think it's a Beatles song, eh? Yeah. But um, yeah, so that was my first 
ever my first time ever recording and we record onto tape mm -hmm. so that's og bro that's, uh, that's how old i was we remember those <laughs> i remember tape decks bro yeah, i remember recording say. off the radio bro there was a time yeah bro so yeah it was me and it was like that's that's how it was and like obviously he he's an amazing songwriter like i found some of his songbooks that like he kept very private mm -hmm. but like just looking at how well he could put a song together in terms of like lyrics and concepts and thematically like it was really cool kind of like reading through those but hopefully he never sees this so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know that have, already have you, <laughs> have you ever thought about taking some of his words lyrics putting it into your own song and showing yeah no i've definitely i i definitely have and i asked him and i think he told me that he burnt all the books Oof. Yeah, one right. of those artist moments. Bro. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Just do it for myself. And like, All right, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Well, it was crazy when he told me that. I was kind of pissed off at him, but, you know, it was his art. He yeah, 100%, bro. With it. All so. right. Are you going to collab with your son when he turns six? Oh, I hope my son is like a neuroscientist or something. <laughs> <laughs> Get that money, bro. No, nah, 100%. <laughs> I definitely like, you know, he's starting to like take to music a lot because we, we got music playing in the household, mm -hmm. my partner and I. And, um, it's always good music too. So yeah. yeah, he loves to dance. He loves to make a lot of noise. Like started, as I was telling you, he started screaming and yeah, right, trying to ready. get the pitch right, you know, like mm. that's not how you hit this note. It's like you. So, so the time <laughs> may come, the collab may come, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if he doesn't think I'm, you know. A loser. A loser. Dad. Dad, nah, like. bro, come on. Come on. You're going to be doing the same thing with your son, bro. Just pump and walk a flocker in the kitchen. <laughs> <and just> like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's going to be sitting here interviewing your son one day, bro. <laughs> bro, yeah. he's going to be asking you about all those lyrics as soon as he's able to talk. Just remember that. Uh, so. You're going to yeah, have to so explain those ones to <laughs> Yeah, I'll keep the bass on. But I think about this sometimes. Like, shout out to my mum for letting me listen to some wild ass shit. I look back yeah. at some of the songs I listened to and I was like, damn. I don't know if I want my son listening to that, but <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I grew up all right still, so it can't be that bad. Well, bro, I was like, I just had this conversation with um, with my partner's dad mm. um, and I conned my mum into like buying me, I think I was eight or nine years old, but she bought me the Marshall Mathers LP. Okay. Yeah. Classic. And bro, like I put that on and she had no idea it was rated R. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea either. And so I put it on because I, I, I just heard people talking about the real Slim Shady song. Mm -hmm. And I was playing it, playing it. I was like, ooh, this is yeah. scary. What's he talking about? No, I, I put it on to Kim. Do you remember yeah, Kim, yeah. that yeah. song? For hearing that at eight years old, bro, it's like a horror movie, you know? Bro. Yeah. But but there was something about it that like intrigued me. I couldn't stop listening, but it was it freaked me out. Eh? So yeah, same same era. My mom bought me Dr. Dre 2001. Yeah. And that had, you know, <laughs> forgot about Dre and all that, all those sort of songs on it. And I was just like, oh my God. And then I started listening to worse music, like hardcore and metal, like with this guy. And it's just like fucking Slipknot and like Cradle of Feel. That was a crazy time <laughs> of life. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. We've yeah, been like, through some genres over this side, man. But that's yeah. mad. I think that's, that's, I think that's so cool because I think that like, you know, you deserve to be, kind of like leading the culture if if you're so well versed in all different types of genres like it's not just this one lane that i stick to Amen. all the time so that's one yeah, re that's I, I relate that to why i can listen to a wide array of music even in australia there's so yeah. many different sounds and that because you know i've been across everything at some time and same as kev it just makes it a great combo guys makes that's so crazy combo. though like <laughs> yeah. hardcore like bro I don't know. Yeah. I never got into it. Eh? I think the most hardcore I ever listened to was like Rage Against the Machine. Like good yeah. vibes, yeah, yeah. energy, good That's energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, is it heavy? Yeah, yeah. It's more well, rappy, yeah, like they, they funk, rap too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit that, of a crossover. Uh, you also have had a, a big stint or a stint on X Factor. Obviously, yeah. most yeah. people know. Um, you had like a gold plaque out of that. You with some yeah, yeah, yeah. No, with, so a, with a label most of the time. Yeah, they um obviously like I I auditioned as a solo artist and I wanted to be a solo artist, but yeah. they ended up like giving us the ultimatum of you can either go in this group we're creating or you can go home. Mm. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. Foo, like I, I saw like, you know, this is kind of my opportunity. So I I jumped in the group, signed to Sony, we came third, signed yeah. to Sony Australia. And um, and I love all the boys in the group. Um, I just think that I always had my heart set on like the solo thing. And yeah. I was on the hustle all the time. I was in the studio all the time. like. You know, I was falling asleep in class because I, I would stay up until 5 a.m. learning how to produce, learning mm -hmm. how to record myself, write songs, like just experiment and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think my hustle was just like a little bit different to like a lot of other people at the time. So, yeah, I I, I eventually, yeah, we got a, we had a gold single. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of that one? 
Uh, surrender. Surrender. Yeah. And can I just mention, <laughs> I had a Google of the collective as I had to. Yeah. Bro, you had some good phases of clothing back then. Man. No, we had stylish bro, that stuff, was, That bro. was stylish as well. Yeah, but, but. Not sure if I could imagine you looking like that now. Yeah. <laughs> Even the hairstyle. Bro, I was what a like, time. Let's leave that in, the, in those years. 100%. But, uh, <laughs> 100%. But, but look. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to say like, no, at, at the same time, like I'm super grateful for the opportunity and. And I think that's where I really like kind of got my foot in the door. And from that, I could just go boom and just bust through it. Eh? Like, You've broken how? down a few doors over your time. Yeah. For sure. Bro. Which, which like, you know, I never started music to thinking that this is what I was going to do. And this, this, and that. I just did it because I really love to do it. So. Facts, bro. <laughs> 100%. Well, that was like 10 years ago, if not more. Mm. Um, 12, I think. 12? Yeah. Yeah. yeah look. Like you said, you got put into a boy band at that yeah. time. Boy band, would you call it? Yeah, yeah it was boy a boy band. band. Yeah, because it was the One Direction era. Yeah, like, that's they, right. They were pumping it hard. And everywhere. they tried to recreate. Yeah, yeah. In saying that, with so many ways to get your music out there now, do you think there's still a time and place for X Factor and artists on those kind of shows? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a tough one, bro. Because mm. like, um, we're living in a different digital era. Mm -hmm. Um, and things are coming and going much quicker than they used to, eh? Facts. So, I mean, I was looking, um, I think it was on TMZ or Academics or something, mm. and they were talking about this girl that had just won American Idol like two or three years ago. She's back busking in the subways at New York. And that's how quick it goes, man. And like, um, I don't know how how sustainable it is if, if you haven't kind of like built a core fan base and like, your cult following and stuff like that. And I think you can do everything that you can do on X Factor on social media. It might just take a little bit longer, but it's an easier way to connect with the people that are really going to like fuck with your music. Okay? Mm -hmm, 100%, so, bro. Yeah, I think there's still a place for it. Like f for those people that kind of want to get on TV and like kind of want to have that moment to shine. But I don't think you need it necessarily anymore just because like as i said it's it's a changing era that's it there's so many ways to mm. get it out there for yeah. sure bro speaking of social media um so after x factor you went on to um release some cover songs yeah um okay the numbers we're talking here uh, re remember they're 10 years ago and they're fucking crazy like the numbers you were getting there was absolutely insane yeah let's talk about wild. facebook uh, youtube days mm -hmm. um you know tiktok and stuff w wasn't really around um as of yet so we're talking you know tens of millions of of, of views in 2012 or something like that which yeah. is just unbelievable <laughs> so <laughs> ridiculous bro it's so <laughs> you're even thinking about it now you know that was kind of like the the era of like myspace players and stuff mm -hmm. or maybe a bit after and bit after. you know you're doing millions on facebook and and, and all that so <clears throat> What was it like when you were uploading those covers and just seeing those numbers roll in? Because it's, even for an artist today, that would be almost unfathomable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, cause it was. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Eh? Like, mm. I, I remember I woke up one day and like, yeah, there was a, like a million or a couple million on one of my things. I was like, fro, quick, I better find another song to do. Eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but nah, yeah, it was definitely like, yeah, it was unfathomable unfathom at, at the time. Eh? But I just kind of like, locked in and I was looking like it wasn't really a space that a lot of people had occupied at the time mm -hmm. and I was watching all the older dudes that used to kind of do the same thing there was a guy called Ibrahim that I used to watch all the time he used to like recreate songs but in his own way in his in his room and like he really inspired me eh, to like kind of kind of do my own videos and from there like I think because social media started really like starting to ramp up at that time mm -hmm. I was just lucky that I caught it at that that moment also i was working hard and like the music was dope and for for that time like if i listen to i, I can't really listen to it now but <laughs> nah, look, that's yourself but i'm sure a lot of your fans yeah. will look back and still think that shit is top quality yeah you know, a, a1 and i think there, there was moments like it's moments for people you know so yeah it was like a really surreal feeling for me and like uh, my manager at the time um julian like he he was really pushing me to kind of keep it going because he had a real good way of like, you know, knowing how to market things. Mm -hmm. Same with Fortify. Fortify was probably one of the one of the first guys that told me like, oh, um, let's let's just I'll film you on my phone and 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 just sing like your version of this. Because what he would used to do, bro, before we did that, is like he would we would be out on town or something and this guy would like introduce me to people and he'd be like, yeah, this is my, this is my little bro, Will Singe. Like, bro, sing something for him real quick. <laughs> I'll be like, what? He's like, bro, I think he took me aside one time. He's like, bro, you just gotta fucking do that shit, bro. Like, 
you just got to like be proud of it and like want to hustle it eh, in mm. any way you can. So I would actually just sing for people all the time. That's hectic. Yeah, I just it helped me get over that fear. So that was kind of the birth of that. But yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty crazy thing to get millions and millions of streams. It's not something that I thought was going to happen. But as soon as it did, like, you know, I'm no dummy. Like, I'm I'm going to keep kind of pushing that for until sure. until mm. I can get to the next level where I wanted to get to. So yeah, Amen. everyone needs a friend like Fortify. Amen. Absolutely. Get you one, get you one man. <laughs> So one good thing I liked about your music was that like a lot of people commented was as opposed to being a straight cover, you're kind of putting your own twist on it. You're putting your own pre hooks or bridges and, and switching out lyrics or doing different styles. So how did you approach that? Like, w like when did that come into your head? Like, no, I'm not just going to do like a straight cover. I'm actually going to put my own twist on it. Cause I think it's two very different things. And I think to kind of put your own twist on it, it takes a bit of balls. You know what I mean? Cause these are big songs you're, you're covering. Like we're talking Fetty Wap and, and Drake, you know, the biggest artists in the world at the time. Absolutely. Um, I think, I just wanted to put my little signature on it. So it's not so much of a, oh, sing this song. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sing this song. It was more of a, if this was your song, how would it sound? And so that's what inspired like things like the 679 and um, Trap Queen and uh, Hotline Bling, especially. Like I was listening to a lot of like R&B, proper R&B. So uh, that's how I turned Hotline Bling into like an R&B song. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I approach it is, is more like, if this was your song, how would you do it? Mm -hmm. And that's why I could kind of like throw my little little yeah, like lyrics just, in there or like little um, outros and stuff like that. And, and just recreating the whole song in itself. Yeah. Not, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But whether yeah. it be the beats, bringing in the guitars, doing that along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes, you know, I look at some of my covers and I'm like, damn, I should have kept that beat for one of my own songs. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, that's, that's, yeah, that's kind of how I approached it. So it was, it was cool like that. Yeah, we read that, you know, a lot of people did hit you up afterwards, you, right. you know, we read that T-Pain reached out to you at some point, yeah. is that true? T-Pain, I think he was um, messaging, there was a few dudes, man, like, man, I've probably smoked it all the way now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a few, I know the Brandy posted me, um, T-Pain posted me, um, who else, there was, a, there was a few rappers in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Like it was cool to to be noticed by these people. Sure. But at the same time, like looking back on it now, I don't know how much it did for my career, career. at the time. Were there any other artists along that lines that ever thanked you for doing so? Because I can imagine at this time, switching up their song, giving a whole new life may also increase their views at the same time. There was a few artists that reached out to me to like push, like their label would reach out and like ask me to do covers. Oh ah, yeah, yeah. Um, to push their next single or whatever. Um, but if I wasn't feeling it, like, or if I couldn't come up with anything, I wasn't going to just take the bag and run, which maybe I should have, but, <laughs> you know, like, um, but I think, who was it? I think Rich Homie Kwon, his team reached out after I did um, one of his songs, um, but I don't think anything. No, nah, nothing crazy. Did anything happen? There was a, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened there. Eh? Like, it's been a long time now. Yeah, man. it's been a while, bro. Like, yeah. it's it's been a while, so... Um, no, so maybe maybe I'm forgetting something. I don't know. Oh, good. Bit off topic, but again, I listened back through a whole lot of things you've said lately mm. the last few days. Um, you had an album you were going to put in with the label at one time that didn't come about, <laughs> right? Oh. Yeah. Look, we can go into that album a little bit more. Quiet. But one thing that set out mm. stood out for me is that you had one of your favorite <clears throat> singers songwriters on that. Well, one of my like favorite singers that I grew up listening to yeah. this R and B. He's like R and B cat from Philly. His name's um. Latif, Corey yeah. Williams. I, yeah, yeah. I'm sure like, I don't know how well known he is out here. He's okay. actually one of my close friends now. Like, okay. But to go into a session and like, you know, this guy walks in and I was like, bro, are you, are you this guy? And like, I just kept scrolling through all the music I had of him. He's like, how do you even have it? all of that music? I don't even have that music. <laughs> um, um, so he ended up he ended up coming in and actually helping me vocal produce my whole EP that oh, I had awesome. worked on. Yeah, EP. Uh, yeah, and then um, I think even even Black at the time he had written a song on my EP as well. Awesome, bro. Yeah. So what ended up happening with the EP? Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. It might be too early in the convo for that, but no, no, no. I handed it in, and like they just told me it was too R and B. Okay. And that was the that was that was it. And they were like, I ne we need a pop single way. And I was like, I was mm. I was looking at like, you know, the things that were getting me the most views on on YouTube and stuff. And I'm like, 
This is all R and B music. It might be fringe R and B. Like I might not be the greatest R and B singer in the world, like, but it's still, you know, got that flavor to it, you know. So I don't know why they kind of wanted to turn it into this pop thing. Mm. I do know, like, I kind of know now because of Mama. Yeah. But at the same time, like, that's not who I wanted to push as a, as myself because it's not where my heart lied, you know. It's I, cool that you stuck to your guns, to be honest. Yeah, well, it was cool, but at the same time, like the whole project, just like Go it's on. in the it's in the in the bank now, bro. Like it's it's gone, ski. So. Music world things, huh? Yeah, and wow. and the thing is, if you're not if you're not dropping the music, like then it's gonna sound outdated and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like this was before her, and like this was before Black was killing it, and mm -hmm. this is before like you know I was kind of in there, like the sound was I was in there. I felt like I was in there, so. Um, for the fact that they kind of pushed back after I worked so hard on it, I was just like, damn, like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. Like, I just worked all the way to this moment and I thought it was going to be the moment and you guys just kind of like shut it in my, shut it down in my face eh? and just told me I had to be more pop and I was just like, Phew. oh, it gave me like mad identity issues, bro. Like it gives you, it makes you question like, oh, is this who I am? Like. Am I supposed to be someone else for all these other people and mm -hmm. be this person who I thought I was just for myself? Like, it's a, it's a tough thing. I think, um, you know, my mental health took a real, real um, bashing at that moment. Like, everyone kind of saw what was on the outside and like, whoa, he's doing this and this and this. And really, like, my mental health and my confidence in myself was just going, just crashing hard. Eh? And I think that's like a big thing that is not spoken about a lot in the music industry. And I think it's a, a very important thing that needs to be spoken about because when you get to certain points in your life, like, especially as a solo artist, like it's just you out there and it's, it's just you trying to figure out how, how you're supposed to deal with the situations. It's not like most people have been through these situations before, like the who, people you can relate to and stuff. And yeah, it was just, um, that was probably like the moment where I started to feel real jaded about the music industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, well, was this with RCA? Yeah, it was, was with RCA. Uh, yeah. This situation you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So you said it kind of sent you down a, a, a really um, negative kind of like outlook on the music industry. Mm. How long did it take you to recover from that? And, and how did you go about it? it? Took me years, years to recover. Right? I have just like, you know, I still think that, um, well, it gave me a lot of toxic traits as well. Um, I became real, like real cynical about things and like be jealous about other people's success mm -hmm. and be like, you know, watch how they're like, it's something's gonna happen to them too. But um, yeah, it took me years to kind of like recover from that. Not until I kind of came back here, I got a bit more grounded, but even still I was going through a lot of like tough things personally and like a lot of tough things like business wise, like all in the same year I was going through you know, one of the hardest breakups I've ever been through in my life. And then my record label and I had parted ways and then my manager and I had decided to part ways as well. And like, I'd never felt like so alone, you know? Yeah, and I just, I couldn't talk to anyone about it because everyone's always like, oh yeah, you're doing this, you're doing this. And you kind of got to put on this front for people, which I don't do anymore, eh? Like I'm just regular person, so. Um, and I know what it feels like to kind of take a fall and, and try to pick yourself back up. So yeah, man, like, yeah, it was, um, it was, a it was a long time to, to kind of teach myself how to, how to get out of that. I was in denial about it heaps too, eh? And like, yeah, I just thought I could, I'll be fine. I'll get it back. Like, this would be cool. But yeah, it took me a long, long time. So there's so many things to bounce off in that little conversation right there, bro. Mm. Did you end up talking to people about it? Did you end up getting the words out about how you actually felt or did you just deal with it yourself? What was the go? Um, the first thing I did, I came back here for a show. That's when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up, I was paying rent all of 2020 in LA and I um, I couldn't get back there. So that was crazy. Yeah. Ah, so no matter what, you're still paying it? Yeah, ah. I, I had to pay because I was sharing with um, one of uh, Two of my best friends mm -hmm. at the time in LA. Um, so if, and plus I had all my stuff in there, like my studio was in there, like my bed, like just heaps of stuff that, cause I was living there for five years. 100%. So I had accumulated a lot of shit. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I got stuck back here and I was kind of in limbo. I was like, fuck, 
what am I supposed to do? Like, you know, I just come out of my label deal and I was going, as I said, I was going through that breakup. So um, what happened? Oh yeah, it was Donnell Lewis mm -hmm. and my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Because we share the same birthday. Shout out Donnell. Yeah, shout out Donnell. That's my brother right there. Because he helped me through it a lot. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know how much he helped me, but he did. Um, and we we went to Bondi and there was a there was this big like, hotel party that he was having and man i was smoking a lot like i was smoking i don't know if you're allowed to put this in but yeah, like, yeah, yeah i was smoking heaps of bod like mm. you know and i was just kind of like now looking back on it it was kind of just to numb myself because being sober i was just pissed off at everything and everyone all the time and i think smoking made that even worse but um yeah i i i went to bondi he was having a party in one of the hotels over there and um I was smoking, smoking, and he's like, yeah, everyone's about to get here. And I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go. He's like, what do you mean you're going to go? It's our birthday. He's like, he's like yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. And um, I was like, yeah, yeah, see you, see you guys, see you guys. Walked out the door as soon as the door closed. Oh, just had a full meltdown outside the door. I was like, I don't know what's going on. One of my friends was with me. He's like, bro, are you okay? I was like... I don't know, man. Like, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I, I just feel so like lost and like, uh, yeah, it was a pretty heavy moment for me. But after that, I kind of left Sydney, went up and stayed with Don. I was only supposed to stay there for a week, ended up staying with him, Brizzy, for like six months. I just slept <laughs> on the floor in his studio. And it was mad, like it was mad perspective for me to let the, to know that all I needed was like a mattress and like a computer and take you back to basics. Huh? Yeah. And that's, yeah. What, I think that's what I needed, you know, like, and I got fit again and yeah, it was just a, it was a really good time. So, Beautiful, man. um, I think that helped me a lot, but I think, you know, there were, there were a lot of toxic traits that took, you know, up until maybe, I mean, I'm still working on myself, bro. Never stops. Got to work but, every day, man. Yeah. But I think it, it took up until maybe this year to really like dust myself off and like, you know um find the love of of music again which i'm still doing i think my son helped that a lot um which is awesome so shout out kids and yeah 100 percent shout out kids shout i out think kids. he was like having my son like kind of like made me be like oh first stop being so selfish with how you move and how how you feel all the time like it's mm. not always just about you you know like mm. you have to kind of get your shit together for this little boy right here and for sure. so that's what i did beautiful man yeah. perspective we yeah. might um bounce around yeah you got something to say oh i was just gonna say like i really want to thank you for sharing that because mm. i feel like a lot of musicians in, in in um in similar positions you know they've got a record deal with with the label overseas they've got millions of streams this and that and exactly like you said it's a bit of imposter syndrome because it's like you have all these great things going on but you don't feel right inside but you feel like if you don't feel good, you're being ungrateful. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But there's so many different factors that go into it. And I think you saying this is gonna be, you know, really powerful for everyone watching because even people, you know, who who can be killing it, you know, from the outside, you never really know what's going on inside. And and also it's like really good that you had those friends as well. Like sometimes it just needs, you know, one or two people just to hear you out, yeah. give you a mattress, give you a place to stay. And then that can be kind of the start of your, your, your healing journey, you know? Yeah, Fact. absolutely. And I think like, you know, obviously my, my family was there for me too, my mother and my dad and my my sister as well. Like they were all looking out for me. I just think, yeah, it was it was nice to have a, a few people, even if it was unsuspecting of them, that they might be finding this out right now that they helped me through all these things. Like it was Donnell and, and Sesh. Do you know Sesh? Yeah, Dirty yeah, Sesh? yeah. Yeah, so just being able to talk to them was, was really helpful for me, man. Because, yeah, I think it's exactly like you said, like, that whole imposter syndrome and and putting on that front for everyone else be, just because it looks like you're doing well on the outside doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing well on the inside and as artists i think artists are quite fragile people i mean we're so tapped in emotionally i feel like you know and that's how we that's how we are able to make our money and like make our music so um i think it's important to just kind of like sit down with yourself or like sit down with someone that you trust and just let it all out and like have that conversation of like how you're feeling because the longer you hold it in like the deeper and darker the hole gets oh eh? mm -hmm. and um yeah it's just really important so all you artists out there make sure you are looking after yourselves preach brother <laughs> beautiful while this interview might bounce around a bit now but mm. again you've said some said some good things in there something you mentioned a couple of times and i've heard you mention before 
And again, you don't have to talk too far into it if you don't want to. But you mentioned having one of the hardest breakups of your life, yeah? Mm. When you first started blowing up, when you first left to go to America, did you have a partner at that time? I did. And is that the partner that this whole... It was. And yeah. how was that, I don't know, navigating, having a partner, moving to America, living that life? Um, it was... It was hard, man. Mm. It was definitely hard. And I'm sure it was way harder for her than it was for me. And, you know, hindsight's a bitch, like looking back at, at things like, there are a lot of things that I wish I could have done differently. Um, just in terms of treating this person properly. Um, but, you know, I was young. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was like touring the world cause like thousands of people at these shows and stuff, which was mind blowing to me. So like, I was just making the most and living in the moment and like, as I said, moving selfishly, like mm -hmm. not thinking about the people that are tied to me at the same time. So I think it was really hard for her. Like, and I think that that was the kick of, in my ass, like is that she got over it and then I came back here and everything fell apart for me. And that's when I was like, oh man, like I've done all these things and like, oh, I, like why, I wish I could, you know, take it all back and like now now i'm feeling like this and it's like well bro you made the bed you lay in it eh? mm. but yeah it was it was difficult i think it is difficult to have a partner in in the music industry or just the entertainment industry in general but it's definitely possible no, i think I just seen. being in your like your 20s as well like being quite young um and being surrounded by you know the same age people around you guys that you've grown up with like yeah it's it's um it's a it's a hard task, but you can do it. Don't want to dwell on um, you know the negative stuff for too long, but yeah. another thing that you've you've talked about as well is um, that when you're kind of getting uh, you know online heat and rising to prominence, so to speak, um, a lot of people maybe try to write you off as oh he just covers songs oh, or absolutely. he's doing this. So how did you handle that sort of backlash and really establish yourself? You know, I am my own <clears> artist. I think that was a really hard thing for me, and like. That's what I wanted to prove with my with my project that I handed mm -hmm. into the label is that like I can actually write songs. You know, mm -hmm. I've been writing songs since I was freaking fifteen years old. So um, it was a difficult thing to like make the switch from covers to originals because it's a lot of pressure, man. Once you've done like this many videos of like songs that are known, like I think there's like a lot of expectations on you to like, oh, your sound's gonna be so primo, like, or it's just gonna suck. Mm -hmm. like balls eh? like and um i think obviously rush came out which was my first single which was like an interpolation of like a, a 1990s pop song um and that did pretty well like that did like 14 million 15 million but then while i was on tour um jonas blue hit me up and he was like you know i've got this song you you want to sing on it i was like yeah for sure like he was just starting to come up. This would have been his third single. So um, I was on tour, I was recording it and the song just blew up, eh? And I blew was... up is an understatement, I think, yeah. for that song, bro. That uh, was bro. what made me think, all right, William Singe is taking over the goddamn world, bro. It was crazy, yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't expect that. Yeah. I didn't expect that. And my parents and, like, my sister and my friends were sending videos, like, oh, they're playing you, they're playing you, they're playing you. But apparently, like, some of the radio stations here didn't, like, give me props on the song that I was singing, which is mm. whack. And I think you guys like should apologize for that. Eh? Cause like <laughs> I'm an Australian artist at the end of the yeah. day. And if you're not going to mention me, like I think that's, um, that's kind of like trash to be honest. Yeah. But Hey man, like do your thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the song blew up and I was just like, Whoa, this is crazy. And from that, I think that's how I, I kind of established myself as, as more of a original artist, but mm -hmm still think it's a challenge bro for me like i sit on a lot of music like i've sat on lots of music for all my life because i'm always touching and tinkering and like trying to fix it up and make it a little bit better and i just need to i just need to figure out a way to finish the product and just put it out instead of just like holding on to it and thinking i can continuously make it better because sometimes you lose the magic in that but yeah i think i'm still i'm still working at it so yeah Doing a good job doing it, bro. Come Thanks, bro. on, bro. First. Yeah, so you just mentioned that, um, you know, commercial radio didn't really mess with the track. Um, no, they just, it's not that they didn't mess with oh, it. No, they, they messed they played with the track, it, yeah. But they didn't mention my name. Oh, like, they didn't mention your name. Oh, yeah, sorry, I misunderstood. One. I misunderstood. Yeah. No, no, you're good. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't mention my name. And like, I'm singing the whole song. Like, mm. come on, come bro, on. I, I was never aware that you weren't 
Are you, are you listed on the song or is it Jonas Blue? No, I should be listed. You on are, the song. right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. How the hell yeah. is your name not getting mentioned in that case? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't, but it's it's pretty crazy. Like, mm. yeah, I think there's like I don't know. I don't know if the industry's like got something against me here or something. I don't know, bro. But, and you've been putting in work for years out here. It's not like you just randomly blow up. You've been putting in work. You're tapped into the local scene for a very long time. You're not yeah. just this random guy sat at home. You've been out there hanging out with people for yeah. years. And I what, think. I think. Oh, let's, uh, I don't know if I leave the house as much as I should. Okay. Well. But, but, but I think because I've gone through all the stuff that I went through, like, I don't know, like my time is just, my time is for the people that really matter to me right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've done all the going out and socializing and stuff and, you know, I'm a nice guy. Like, Bro, I'm not, I'm cool not, guy. I'm not, I'm not like a dickhead and I don't, I don't walk around going, you know, I'm the fucking man. Like I've done this, this and this, like. It's just uh, I'm a normal guy, and I, I I don't know whether there's some people in the industry that like I don't know they might have a problem with me because I I never really got too deep into the industry here, or like maybe I've ruffled some feathers when I was like trying to work it out myself, you know, when I was young. Like mm -hmm. I, it was six times platinum here and stuff, and mm, they were facts. playing it all the time, and I was an Australian artist, and I thought they would be proud of that, and like try to help push it a little bit but mm. here at take flight we're proud of you brother yeah oh which, bro i appreciate you you <laughs> always on, been supporting me because like oh, i appreciate we're, you. we're talking about a track that's closing in on one billion streams on spotify not not one million like mm. one one billion <laughs> this is a this is a very very big song but i think what you're speaking of what you've spoken about just there it's indicative of i guess a wider feeling that people have in the r&b scene um i don't know if you heard about the arias controversy um, there was only four nominees um, in recently as opposed to five because some artists weren't eligible. And I know that recently myself and Wings have been part of conversations where they're thinking about how they can kind of, uh, I guess, rejig the, the, what do you call it? The, the process to get the people process on board. To, yeah. to, to make it more representative of what's actually happening at the R&B scene here. You know, to only have four artists. Mm. Man, there's so many like R&B artists out here, right? Like mm. I, I, I know so many of them and, they're all amazing. Maybe they just haven't signed up to the Arias or something. Like I don't think I've ever signed up to the Arias. There you go. We're all gonna have the, to learn how to get it done. <laughs> I think I've got the paper in my bag. I just couldn't figure out like half the answers for the questions. And stuff. <laughs> we need to make it so, easier, bro. We need to make it easier. Bro, if I can't figure it out, I, how can I expect all these like younger kids to figure it out? You yeah. know, like, that's right. It's, Things it's just need to change with that, and we yeah. can make it happen yeah. out here. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think it, it can happen. Like, uh, I think a lot of this. Um, a lot of this gatekeepering shit needs to, like, people need to cut it out the way. Like mm -hmm. that, that shit's just killing the, the youth and the, like the the creativity in in the music and stuff like that. I think it's that's bullshit to me because like, I come from a place where, you know, I made music because I love to make music. I didn't make music to to make it a business and make all this money. Like I was lucky enough to do that, but. Um, I think, yeah, the whole gatekeeping thing is kind of overtaking, overshadowing everything else in the music industry now. At what level do you think the gatekeeping is coming from in your own thoughts? Like, where do you think the gatekeeping is coming from? Like the top? Is that what you mean? I don't know if it's the top, but it's more so the business side of things like just gatekeepers. Like I hear a lot of whispers about like, you know, how people view me and stuff like that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, you don't even know me though. Mm. Like, what are you talking about? So you're just going to cut off this whole, like, no Will Singe over here because I don't like that guy. Eh? That's bullshit, mm. man. Like, that that's that's not furthering the culture at all. That's kind of like, you're just doing, you're, you're kind of furthering your own, like, vendetta or like, you know, how you think the industry should be. Or, and I don't think that's that's right to be Thanks, bro. to be doing that to all these young artists as well, man. Amen. Um, switching it up. Yeah. You said in the past, uh, a lot of people doubted you when you were telling them you're Australian R&B star, yeah. R&B artist, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We'll call you star. You can call yourself an artist. <laughs> uh, what was that like? And with the like breakouts of people like Kid Leroy, oh. do you think the whole perception of that is changing now? What do you mean? So do you think overseas, especially the perception of Australian R&B stars coming, being able to make it over there, the perception is changing or it's still sticking yeah, around? It, yeah, it must. But I don't even know if it comes down to like, if your music is that good and you hustle like that kid, like I heard stories about Kid Leroy. He would go into like a studio and, you know, they'd leave him in there for like 20 minutes and he'd come out with three like fire ass <laughs> tracks, bro. Beast. Like 
that's some that's like next level shit like you can't deny that it doesn't matter where where they're from on the map like yeah you know that i don't even think that plays a part at that point yeah okay but i, I think yeah I, yeah i don't think I, I in my head like i don't think that being an r&b artist is you know synonymous with oh they've got to be from america mm -hmm. you know i've I always thought that like if the music's good people will come and that's just how it is so yeah. Yeah. Hectic. I don't know. Kid, no? Kid Leroy, man. Bro, shout out Kid Leroy. Fucking hell, that guy. Bro. Come that on guy. the pod. He's out of <laughs> yeah, there, come bro. on the pod, Leroy. Where are you at? He's in another stratosphere. Oh, I know, yeah. bro. Before the singing, bro, you yeah. said a few years back, you said you don't know how Americans would take to your rapping voice, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Rapping in your natural accent you know anyway. Because, bro, you got, a, you got a pretty Aussie accent there with you. Oh, right? I do, I. You do, bro. I think a lot of people buzz out on it too because they're like, like I thought you were going to sound like more Kiwi or something. Nah, like, bro. Oh, man, you Have go. you got any thoughts of giving it a go and getting it back out there, bro? Rapping? Yeah. Bro. In that natural accent? <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts? 100%. Bro? 100%. Like, you know, I got a, I got a few in, in the tuck, bro. Like... Just, just tucked away, uh, mm. like you know. <laughs> oh, look, we may have heard a little something. We might be trying to get him to talk out here, but <laughs> uh, but but yeah, I I think I don't know how people will take it because, okay. um, you know, uh, oh, you're just a singer guy. You can't be a rapper. You're not hard, like blah 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 blah. Like I think that's a that's a misconception as well. Like I know a lot of R and B singers that are tough dudes, man. Mm. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think um, I'll definitely give it a go this year or maybe next year or see, see where or it's at. Or maybe like a few months on Sky Sessions, brother. That's Absolutely. what we're saying. Get on Absolutely, you, Absolutely, bro. No, I, I definitely want to jump on and like, you know, show, you know, these singers, get, they got bars too, bro. Hey, man, we, we got bro. lyrics, man. And mm. um, yeah, I've actually been having a lot of fun doing hip hop. I think that's how I'm finding the love for music again is just by experimenting with the things that I used to do when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Cause when I started music, like I, I wanted to be a rapper. So I was just rapping. And then I was like, you know what? A lot of people can do this and I can like, I, I'm an all right singer. So like, let me sing a song and see, see. Plus the crowd as well. Like mm -hmm. I, I love swinging to the ladies and you know, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally understand. Not anymore. Book. Like shout out to my missus. Eh, like, <laughs> she knows what's up. I'm only singing to her these days. Hey. <laughs> never, the, never mess with a tough R&B dude. No. If he can, uh, if he can harmonize like Craig David and he's got like at least, uh, three tattoos he'll knock you out like <laughs> just relax you just, won't, you just won't expect it eh? no. <laughs> all right bro you mentioned before there's so many talented people in australia so many talented r&b artists we have a little segment here a bit of a co-sign segment right we just want you to name if you can one artist that you think deserves a bit more shine than they might already be getting or you just want to show a bit of love to bro man it can be two one. or three it can yeah it can. that's a tough one who did i just i just finished listening to I just listened to Rops's new um Rops One. Hey. Yeah, his 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 album was fire. Eh? I I really like that dude's um that dude's music. He knows. Hey man. Um, who else? I got to give it to the little brother um Malik Lasike. Mm -hmm. Do you know Malik? Yes, I do. I've or, seen his name across Instagram a few I'm, times. I've like he came and stayed at my house and like he'd be singing in the shower and I'd hear him outside and I'd be like, bro, this guy just wakes up and sounds like. You know, like he's got one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard and like his control is out of there cause. So I really want to see him do something um, more this year because I know he's sitting on heaps of music and mm -hmm. he's, he's a young dude, man. And I think he needs to, to get a lot more play. Beautiful. For sure. I like it, bro. I didn't expect you to say Rops, to be honest, but that's a, bro, I, cause, cause, that's cause, a good link, bro. Because I stay in the gym, bro. Like, yeah. I, I'll be listening to like a lot of that stuff, <laughs> hey, man. man. Like, I, I really like hip hop. Cause, bro, like, he's got hard tracks for the gym. The, yeah. Actually, the entire, nearly the entire album, all right? Yeah. Oh, even, There's even a few his, nice songs on there, but... Even his earlier ones, like TNs and oh. like Focus and like all that stuff. But mm. it, it's the same. Like, I listen to a lot of those boys, bro. Like, you know, I'm waiting to see what 1-4 does next. Like, ah. Oh. Bro, I was because uh, I was obviously living in the states when all that stuff was popping off. But you know, I was in my, like I I bought a Maserati, so I was in my Maserati, bro, and fucking just <laughs> blasting <laughs> one four and like all these dudes down in like North Hollywood, cause just like windows down, like fucking check this shit out, like you don't know about this, bro, like so that was mean. You get any uh, weird reactions showing people things like one four and that overseas? Uh never weird reactions. Like I showed a lot of my boys that stuff and like. You know, at first they had to get used to the accent, but once they did and they heard me playing it a lot, like it was like one four chilling it. Um, who else was I playing? There's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a few. Maybe Knox, like people like that, bro. They, they, they got down, man. Like, hey, man. Yeah, I think they like in America. Like, obviously, they like hearing 
the accent that they can understand a little bit better, but... Um. <laughs> That's what we, we talk about this all the time, bro. Yeah. Like there's going to be a time and place where I am convinced there's going to be a time where they catch on fully, right? Yeah, I, no, I, I hope so, bro. Because like, you know, like the UK is starting to pop off, but I know a lot of guys over there, like they're like, nah, we don't listen to that shit, bro. Like, but I think, I think like eventually, like, you know, it's going to become like a, a worldly place and everyone gets to um, have their own spot in in every country almost so yeah. the time will come yeah time. hopefully hopefully they like catch on to our slang and they they like it bro because like i can't see why not bro yeah we I got mad slang bro, calls, 100%, like, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then you can go full rapper bro drop the old uh, r&b pop any any kind of side is all over it's just will singe the rapper all right. <laughs> right? i'm about it i'm about it hard. i'm about it too right. but moving on to the current things mm. uh, your latest single Sorry, I don't want to butcher the pronunciation. Fano, Fano, beautiful. Is that so, how you say it? It's Maori. Yeah, Fano, Fano, Fano. It means family. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just yeah, would yeah, never yeah, guess yeah. that's how you said it. Beautiful. Yeah. Wait, when does this come out? The fourteenth of. When does this? I'll two weeks from, from now. Uh, the two 12th, weeks from now. Twelfth. Yeah, because I'll have a single coming out with like Kenyan. Um, two. All right, give us after. two seconds. We're going to talk about that one too. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, oh, you oh, haven't even heard it. I better hope it's good. No, no, yeah. But like you kind of hinted at there, um, the song comes in both English and Maori versions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what was it like kind of recording in traditional language? Because I think that's such a like, powerful thing for you, you know? Cause it was mean. It was mean. It was mean to go and like tap in with the culture, right? Because obviously like I was raised here. A lot of my family, my dad's family is still over there. Tapping in with the culture. I think it, it was a no brainer, you know, like something that I love as much as music and something I love as much as my culture, like combining that is a no brainer. So mm -hmm. it was a, it was an amazing experience and shout out to Tawaroa. Um, he was the one that helped me translate my actual English version. Um, and yeah, it was just cool. Like I, I went into the sessions quite nervous, eh? Cause I don't speak te reo Māori. I don't, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not fluent in it at all. Um, but you know, I know some words here and there, but um, just singing being, a song's completely different. Yeah, like to, just yeah. being yeah, being able to sing the whole thing and like pronouncing it because our our accents are also different. Like, um, the way they say their vowels are very different to like the English language. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it took me like a day or two sitting in with Tawaroa to um, pronounce and, and sing it all correctly. And he was like, "Bro, sounds good." I was like, "What do you mean? Yeah, Perfect?" Because yeah, like yeah. I was really nervous. Hey, eh? like I think I was nervous that I'd come in and. They'd be judging me straight off the bat, like, oh, he's plastic. He, he's, he's not saying that properly. He's not saying that properly. But hey, man, like, we've all got our journey, and and you know, I'm Maori, it runs in my blood. So, mm. you know, it's and my can birthright. I say just before we move on, beautiful song, bro. Oh, I have thank you, I've, bro. I've only listened to the English version because I know I'm not gonna know what's going on the other. <laughs> but it's a beautiful song, <laughs> thank bro. Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I actually wrote it about two of my my best friends. Hey, eh? like, one of them lives over in the Netherlands and. I don't get to see him as much as I, I want to anymore, but like he knows that like, you know, whenever he needs to, he just bang my line, bro. And I'm always gonna like, I'm always gonna be there to talk to him about whatever. Same with my, one of my best friends, he lives in the city over here now, but um, yeah, it was, it was such an easy song to write because um, I had so much to say about it. And I don't think like, you know, most songs, especially R&B and like pop music, they, they revolve around, oh, I was in love or I fell out of love or like I'm cheating or I'm, I'm thinking about you or I'm, it's always to do with a relationship. So it was nice to write a song about the, the brothers, you know, like and just make sure they know that like, I'm always there, I'm always a call away cause like no matter where we are, like I got you. Big <laughs> love, bro. And I think that's one of the, like the coolest kind of um – changes I've seen in, in the hip hop and R&B scenes here locally. Cause you have like Babyface face Mal rapping in Arabic, you have Kahooks rapping in French yeah. and people are really kind of starting to embrace that. And people overseas, like I'm sure you know, like you were saying before about the Australian accent thing. A lot of people don't know that we have, Australia is so multicultural. Yeah. And the fact that we have artists kind of doing it so proudly on the tracks now, I think is, is a huge step forward, you know? And I think that's like a mad point of difference as well, because we are so multicultural and multifaceted in, in terms of that stuff. It's like, it's nice to like, show people you know we're not just australian like but this is I, I come from this as well and i think it's cool to be proud of your culture man like uh, i think every culture is so beautiful so why not why not preach, do that? preach and um you mentioned that the song means family so mm -hmm. as someone who's you know come from australia been overseas been in the major label world and around literally everything or most things that artists could imagine what does that word mean for you in 2023 Family. family, yeah. Family to me is just like the people that are gonna love you no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter no matter if you're a superstar, or no matter if you're you know 
down in the dumps because like they're always going to be be there for you and vice versa you know it has to go both ways there's a bit of synergy there like you know um it, it has to be the same it's the same love so yeah that's what family means to me it doesn't necessarily have to be blood just the people that are going to love you no matter what you're going to love them so preach bro you said on instagram online there was some big changes you made in 2023 right you've accomplished some things mm. uh what are they, bro? You've ticked some things off your list. Off what your are they? List? Yeah. What are some things you've ticked uh, off your list this 2023, year, bro? 2023. Uh, oh, 2022, I have my son. So, I became a dad. Um, we bought our, like, a family home. So, like, we just bought a house. And I uh, don't have to pay fucking rent anymore. Thank oh, God. Beautiful. Because the rent crisis here, brother. We could talk about that all day. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's that, that's a nice thing. And then, um, what else? There was one more thing. Hmm. Oh yeah, I think I think the the, the one like this is gonna be my uh, I'm gonna be releasing my first original project. So oh, it's happening. Yeah, it's finally happening. Is that Who announced thought, online? Hey? Is I that thought I was gonna go to the grave without really? releasing one. Cause is that announced online already? No, no. So no, is that no, a take no. flight exclusive? That's a take flight. That's exclusive. a take flight exclusive right there. We yeah, got yeah. We, we got it. We got a name for it yet? It's called Where Do Birds Go at Night? Oh yeah. Yeah. Where do so, they go at night? Yeah, that's the question, <laughs> right? <laughs> Where do they go at night? Bro. Who knows, cuz? Fuck. You I'm tell safe. me, brother, because I'm, 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 I'll write a whole <laughs> album about it. <laughs> we'll find out hopefully through that album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, bro. Tell us more about the project, man. Yeah, like uh, anything else you can tell us about that? When's it coming out? What can we expect? Yeah, so I think the project comes out on the last Friday of July. I think it's July 28th, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, it's all originals, thank God. Like, uh, I've got so many and. It's not so much an album, but it is like 11 tracks. So uh, I'm just going to call it an EP because like <laughs> thematically, it's not an album. It's not something that I've really like, um, it's like real well thought. I feel like an album is like your life's work eh? mm -hmm. and the, the things that you're super proud of. I'm super proud of this stuff, but I feel like this is more of a warm up to an album. So yeah, it's just... Uh, 11 tracks and I kind of stick to my crew with this one that, that means like Maxwell I don't know if you guys know Maxwell like he's a producer um my friend Keys Open Doors who's over in Tacoma Washington mm -hmm. um he did a bit of production and he does a couple of feature verses I got Kenyon Brown on there hey shout out Kenny Brown Kenny. um I got um that uh Craig yeah yeah shout out Craig from LA he, yeah, he's out there he's, he's on there um and then who else is on production? Tom Crawford, Donald Lewis helped me write write one. Um, but yeah, it's just nice nice to be able to get like my own, you know, stories across. Because every everything that I write, like, and shout out to the people that can go into writing sessions and just pick a topic out of thin air and be like, yeah, let's all, we'll just write this. Because I can't do that. It ha all has to relate back to my life. Um, so yeah, they're just little stories from my life and, and yeah, I'm excited for everyone to hear it. I'm just excited myself to release it. I, if I got one stream, I'm just grateful for that. So yeah. I'll at least be 11 streams, bro. One player of each, no matter yeah, what, we're having a good my listen. G, my G. Real <laughs> shit. That was a big exclusive. That yeah, is a big exclusive. exclusive. That was, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, gave yeah. the take whole project away. <laughs> after Take Flight exclusive. All right, bro. Close to the end here. Yep. Tell us a little bit about this Kenny track coming out in two weeks. Yeah, what can you tell called, us? It's called California on You. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, it's going to be coming out in two days. Two days it? once this drops? Days. Yeah. Two days? Two days. Two days, get ready for the drop. Um, yeah, it's with Kenny and Craig. Um, and yeah, it was just something that I've been sitting on for a while. And we kind of went back into the studio and like reworked everything and Kenny like rewrote his verse and so I had to rewrite my verse and, <laughs> and then I chucked um I chucked the the bro uh, on the outro and like it's something I'm really proud of um and Will Wildfire he was one of the homies over in in the states he helped me write write the song as well so yeah oh yeah bro it's gonna be sick it's a vibe it's a, it's a, it's on that Cali vibe like it's on the west coast kind of vibe you know awesome bro yeah. can you hear and lastly bro what about for the rest of the year in your personal life anything you're trying to achieve anything else you got uh, on I the list I just wanna obviously like I wanna lose some weight first <laughs> come on nah, nah, nah I just wanna both. be don't worry I wanna be a, I just wanna be a good dad and like a, be a good role model for um, my son obviously be a good partner be a good brother good son like that's that's first and foremost for me now I think I, I'm realizing how important all that stuff is in hindsight, because like when I was living in the States for, for as long as I did, you know, like I kind of lost track of a lot of that. And, you know, my mom pulled me up 
And she's like, how come you only call me like once every month or once every two months? And it's like, oh shit, you're right. Because these are the people that matter the most. So that's uh, that's my personal goal is just like be a great person, eh? And like hopefully get a couple more properties by the end of the year and hopefully uh, have another child on the way. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 exclusive. 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 Hey, What's the, what's it called? The which new one? one? Oh, which one? Family. Oh, Fano. <laughs> go Fano. go out and stream Fano everywhere Fano now. Fano out now. Uh, Kenny Calif- Brown, <laughs> Craig, incoming. Uh, Where the birds go at night, yeah, incoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all coming. I appreciate coming. you coming My through, bro. Take flight, 24 karat Kev, Will Singe. It's your boy Wings. We out.